Hello, ECCL Channel greets you. If the eye model is proposed in the chapters on converging lenses, it is because the crystalline lens is a convex one. It would be necessary to consider that both crystalline lens and cornea comprise the eye's optical system and so to assimilate it to a single lens of which I could represent here the symbol. I preferred to keep the drawing to explain how the ciliary muscle works. Look at the lens. When the ciliary muscle is working, it can just as easily make the lens more bulging. We say more convex, that is to say more convergent. The focal length will then be rather short. But the same ciliary muscle could work the other way around and stretch the lens to make it less convergent. And so, at that time, the focal length would be greater. So what is it for? Well, this serves to make the image sharp. That is to say to position the image on the retina. The retina which is a little our own sensor and which lines the bottom of the eyeball. This is called accommodation. It works a bit like in a camera. We want to make the foreground image sharp here. It forms behind the sensor, that is not the right setting. The foreground image will not be clear, so we will have to change something. Here, it's a little different from accommodation, we call that focusing. It is a question of moving the lens here to obtain a clear image on the sensor. The same goes for the background image which is formed roughly at the level of the image focus, we talked about it when it was a question of evoking the image of the sun at this image focus. In the first video, focusing consists in placing, therefore, this image on the sensor, but by moving the lens on the principal axis, while the eye, to accommodate, will change the curvature of the lens. I have a scale problem here. You may have noticed it already. It is that if the eyeball that I represent here has a diameter of 2.5 cm, it is because the object which is there is less than 2 cm. So there is a problem. It's never neat. It's not possible. So this situation is paradoxical. But this problem of scale forces me to change the situation. So forgive me. It's a little smaller but I have to if I want both at the same time, an object 20 centimeters from the eye, or a little more, and the model of this eye. So the image would be sharp if the eye could accommodate to place it on the retina, I said. But I wanted to talk to you about somewhat problematic situations. For some people, the eye is unable to accommodate. The myopic eye, for example, cannot always accommodate, especially for distant objects. When the object is very close, there is no problem, but when the object is far away, as is the case here, the image forms in front of the retina, and the eye cannot accommodate for bring the image here. It is then advisable to associate with this crystalline lens, which seems too convergent, a divergent lens. There is the symmetrical defect, I would say, the counterpart of myopia, which would be hyperopia. Those who have it of difficulty accommodating when the objects are close. They see well from a distance, and they cannot see well near. They see blurry. Why? Because the eye is then too little converge. The image forms behind the retina for nearby objects. It would then be advisable to associate it with, since it is too little convergent, a converging lens. Corrective glasses or a contact lens. That's it for this video. Thank you.